Well, the port side is done. And what I'll do here is I'll just uh, snap a few pictures because I pretty sure I did tell you that I would show show you the uh, the railing here and then we'll get on with the rigging this will only take a, well, a second or two Now I don't think there's too much use keeping absolutely every little piece of, uh, well, I don't want to use the, the R word anymore. Anyway, uh, we'll hang on to it, I guess, just in case we need it for later. I've uh, had the, I put the hull back down onto the bottom of the cradle here. I'm noticing that we are going to have to watch in places like this that uh, the R word doesn't get uh, damaged. So uh, it's a bit of a bit of a tight fit there on the edges, but uh, I think it's going to be all right. Um, now that we're starting the uh, other R word, the rigging, uh, I think we've got to put this piece on right now because uh, I think Ariel is going to fasten onto that and it goes right up here uh, yeah we'll stick on the macro lens for that don't worry I won't make you watch it from way back here uh, what else can I say here I, I think we're pretty much ready you know to get start using uh, Tony's easy line here we are going to be checking photographs. Uh, there are some. There are plans from another kit, uh, another from another manufacturer that is also one to two hundred scale, and I do believe it's it is a, in some ways a more detailed kit, and the instructions are are quite good, and they are available online. So I have been checking that. We'll take a look at them, and we'll be able to tell where some of this rigging goes. Now, when I talk about rigging. I'm, I'm referring to aerial lines, you know, like wires, ropes, cables. Uh, we're, we're probably going to use th this stuff for all of it. Um, you know, try and keep it as fine as possible. You know, just for the fun of it, I think maybe what we should do is just, just measure it. I can't remember if I actually measured this before. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, 10 thousandths of an inch in diameter. That is this particular... A brand, uh, uh, model of it. Uh, it. It comes in two different thicknesses, fine and, and uh, coarse. And the fine is supposed to be a ten thousandths of an inch. So, uh, just for the fun of it, let's just measure it. Now, before we measure that easy line, some of you have probably noticed it's a lot nicer outside today than it was yesterday. Now, if we've done this before and I've forgotten, I hope you'll forgive me. Okay, now I don't want to lose the end of this. We'll also measure the stretch. Now, I would imagine that the diameter will decrease as it stretches. It only makes sense. So we'll, we'll measure it in its uh, in its relaxed state. Um, okay, we're at zero here. And I'll have to be careful not to squeeze it together because it will squash because it's rubber. So I'm just going to go up until I can feel it getting a little bit I must have squashed it, because we're, we're down to uh, five one-thousandths of an inch, and if I... <laughs> yeah, 
if I go like that, it goes down to a thousandth of an inch. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm squashing the rubber. Uh, well, I guess the, the other way I could measure it is by using the microscope. I could actually measure it quite accurately by using a microscope. There is a way. I'm not going to go into how you do it, but uh, there is a way. So anyway, uh, okay, so that sort of was a fail, wasn't it? Uh, well, we should be able to check the stretch on this. It's supposed to be 700%. Uh, what does it say here? Yeah, 700%. So we can check that. I don't think that rubber builds up a static charge the way plastic does, but it could. And if it does, then dust is going to really stick to it bad. So, I haven't done this for a while anyway. Now this may not be the best way of doing this and uh, this is actually the first time I've tried it. I just want to make sure that these don't feel sharp because they'll, if they're sharp they'll cut the line. And um, Okay, so I've got it right at the end there. Now right now the line is slack and we're going to try and grab it at approximately one inch. I, I think I'm getting it pretty close here. I hope I'm not getting my, my hands in your way. Okay, does that look about right? Maybe just a little bit longer. And that, that looks about right to me. Okay, now we should be able to pull this out to seven inches. Oh. It pulled right out of the thing. Uh, maybe I have to find something else here. I don't know if it goes back to its normal size or not. How to waste time, eh? Maybe I'll have to squeeze just a little harder. Okay, that that's approximately right. I'm I'm looking straight down on it now, and I can see it a little. A little better than you can. Okay, I'm squeezing really hard here. Oh, it pulls right out of it. Uh, what else can I use here? Maybe if I was to put a little piece of tape on the inside of this. Okay, you can see what I did here. Now remember, when we when we start out, we want to start out with it slack. Okay. Once again, I'm eyeballing straight down on it. I, I think I've got it uh, pretty well right. So let's put this on zero, and I'm squeezing hard. It just pulls right through. What's happening here? Okay, here we go again. Okay, three, four. Well, something happened there. Don't know if you can see it, but there's a very, very fine little thread of it there. So, this rubber must be made like in strands or something. Yeah. Okay, we can't, we can't check. Maybe there's another way. Maybe if I was to wrap it around something and then put a little bit of CA glue, like a couple of little tiny nails or something, have them, everything just spaced. Um, I'm rambling again. I'm just going to go ahead and do it, and uh, we'll take a look at, at it after I'm done. Okay, I moved in just a little bit closer here, and you can maybe see that little tiny strand that I was talking about before. Anyway, if this doesn't work this time, I'm just going to uh, give up on it. It's not that important. I think probably those of you who have been with me for a long time, you know that I talk about what I'm thinking about. It's not 
as I've said, this is not a tutorial on how to build Trumpeter's uh, Bismarck. It's just your sort of, you know, coming along with me for the ride. Speaking of going for a ride, in the comments this morning, I was reading that somebody was talking about building the uh, the Dora gun. So I kind of knew what it was, so I googled it, and turns out that some outfit is making a kit that is uh, one thirty-fifth scale. This would be a huge, huge model. Um, I think I read it was something uh, over over fifty inches long, um, and about three thousand parts. Now I spent quite a bit of time investigating that this morning, and uh, so that that means that possibly this episode is going to be a little short. Now my experience with this uh, CA glue on here uh, and this stuff is that it has a tendency to shrivel, so maybe. I should be holding this down here. There, just a little bit. Now we'll let that cure. Well, I didn't do too badly. Just, just take out the slack just a little tiny bit here. I don't want to pull it off. I guess I can always edit out the dead spots here. And everything here. Now I, I don't want it too, too lax either. But I'm going to be careful not to stretch it because the stretch is so incredibly easy. There. Okay. Now I was thinking of using curing agent on it and then I thought no better not because curing agent could uh, uh, deteriorate the rubber. probably aid the curing just a little bit. And are we still at, uh, yeah, we're about an inch. Now, if this experiment does not work for any reason, we're going to give up on it. Let's try and get this off of here. Okay, I'm going to hold this one down with my finger, and it's on the zero. Now we'll grab a hold of this nail and see if we can stretch it across to seven without it pulling off. Okay, 200, 300. Okay, I would say that offhand the uh, CA glue probably deteriorated the rubber because we only made it out to what, about 300 or so? Maybe a little better, but still. Um, I don't think they would say it was 700% if it wasn't. Maybe under ideal conditions, uh, it would stretch to 700%. Maybe if I took and held it between my fingers and stretched it out. Um, why not? Okay, just, just hang on a second here. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, let's get approximately an inch here. Okay, from there. Well, that's, a, that's approximately an inch, and I'm holding it tight. Let's go like this. Okay, 700%. Why didn't I think of that to begin with? Now there's another thing that the viewers have learned by watching this series, and that is this. A whole big bunch of stuff that does not work. 
<laughs> anyway, isn't there a saying that goes something to the effect of the best solution is often the simplest solution? Okay, this goes way back to step 52. It goes on something like this. It just sort of hangs on there. Now I'm sure that when I let go of it, it's going to fall off on me. I think I'm going to have to get myself at a little better of an angle here and glue it on. This piece that I'm holding on to with, with the tweezers is probably supposed to be at the same uh, trajectory, you might say, uh, as, as, this, as this piece right here. Um, okay. I think I'm going to have to reposition myself and sort of fasten it on somehow. Anyway, you get the idea. This is the second time that I'm putting this on. I broke it off and then put it on and now it's uh, broke off again. Anyway, we'll see what we can do. Okay, I've got it pretty well right there. And my thinking is if I can just maybe glue just one once on and then let it cure there now we'll let that cure and then I'll do the other one the other one looks like it's just about ready to fall off Now, as anxious as I am to start running line all over the place here and give it a more realistic look, I may as well, you know, get the line going where it's supposed to. Like some things that maybe I think there should be line coming off if there isn't supposed to be. And then in other places, maybe there was a, uh, you know, a rope for a flag or something and there, were, there, were, well, there was a line there. So I'm going to start checking uh, the diagrams that come with that other model and uh, and also photographs and uh, we probably won't be running in fact I know we're not going to be running any line today um, I've got a and another thing I, I would assume that the, the best place to start like let's say there was a line that was to run from from here to here well there isn't but I mean let's say there was that, that would probably be one of the first ones to put on because you wouldn't want to do one from here to here and then and then when you try and run this one, this one's going to be in the way. You know what I mean? You've got to try and do the inside lowest ones first. At least that's that's what I would think. Sort of the way I did the railings. We, d we did this, I think this one right here is the very first one we put on. Oh, I wasn't going to say the R word anymore, sorry. I realize that you're looking at the clock there and you can tell that it's only a little after one. And you're thinking, well, Ron's got a little bit more time yet. Well, I think I'm going to call it a day here and do a little bit of research on to where the lines should go. Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.